So welcome to episode 15 in this series where we're building a Flutterflow application using Superbase. We've got a little episode here which is going to provide some great functionality back into our application. Now if you remember in the last episode we were talking about when you actually complete the task, it wouldn't it be great to actually then see the actual goal get completed itself? And of course if you then uh, mark any of the tasks that are actually then not complete, we then want to actually then move the goal back into in progress or not started. Well let's use the power of Superbase and let's create another trigger within inside our application to make that happen. So uh, without further ado, let's get cracking. So let's have a look at the changes that we're going to make to our application. If I hold my left mouse button down on here, you can see here that we no longer have a status drop down, which we can set completed in progress or not started. That's completely gone. We're going to use the power of Superbase to actually manage the updating of that status within inside each of our goals. OK, and it's all going to be based on the completion of the actual task. So if I click on this particular goal here, if I mark this one as complete and go back, you can see here here that the progress indicator quite rightly says 33% out of the three. But you can see now that we've got the kind of the, the amber band in this now appeared, which means that this goal is in progress. Of course, I can click on this. I can then carry on. I can mark these as all complete. I can go back and you can see that now I'm green. So behind the scenes with inside the database row, we've actually marked the goal as now completed. And of course, I can go back here. I can take these off, go back and we're back into amber status. So of course, they're the changes that we're going to make to our application in this particular episode so let's do that now so here we are then back in Superbase, okay, and I'm on the home page of my database project. Let's just have a look at the actual table itself. So move over to table, let's go to goals, and let's explain a little bit about what we're going to do, okay? So what we're going to do is we're going to manipulate the value of inside this particular uh, column called a status, okay? So we're going to set this dependent on the values that we've actually got over here, okay? We're going to use, again, another Superbase trigger to make that happen. So let's move over and create the function first, and once we create the function we then can create the actual trigger to carry out the update to the status column so let's go and do that now so firstly let's click on the database option here on the left hand side let's go to functions and as you can see these are the two functions that we created previously in the series let's go up to create a new function just choose that and this is where we need to now put the title in so let's call this one update goal completed like that uh, keep it the schema as public and then the return type is going to be a trigger uh, and then down here of course in the definition this is where we now need to start writing out exactly what's going to happen so what I'll do is I'll type this out as I'm going along and I'll try to explain what it's actually doing so as we know already with um, a function we need to give it a beginning and an end so just type beginning and end I'm just going to tab over here and the first thing that we're going to do is we're going to do an, an, an if okay so we need to check for something okay so if the the new record, okay, that is being kind of operated on, that's being created at that particular point, okay, the number of underscore tasks uh, complete equals zero, okay, so no tasks um, at all, okay, we need to then, and then just down here, we then need to do a new dot status is then colon and then equal to so we're going to use that um, expression there to actually set the actual value of the actual status column itself so we're just going to say is not oh not started just like that so really really simple if we have no tasks that are completed we just want to then set the status as not started okay but of course we're going to want to do more than that okay so just going to press carriage return down here but we're going to also going to do an else and ELS and then if and then of course we now need to write this out again so the new record itself the number of tasks complete um, is equal to the new record again to the number of tasks okay and then we just want to then say then and then we're going to set the status down here to say new dot status and then we're going to set that is equal to then and we're going to say completed OK, so, of course, what we're saying here is if we got a match there between the number of uh, tasks that have been completed to the total number of tasks that we've actually got, then it's going to be completed. So we've got three completed, three that we've actually set. So therefore, it's completed. OK, so that's good. There's also another condition that we have to set as well. So just another carriage return here. We're going to say else if again and then uh, open bracket new dot. And again, here we say number of tasks 
complete and we're going to say is not equal to okay the new record again and we're going to say the number of tasks and of course we're then going to say then and we're going to just hit enter down there just tab across new dot status is then colon equal to and you can probably guess what this is going to be okay so the number of ta number of tasks are not equal to the number of tasks completed so they don't match up we're going to need to say that it's in progress okay so we're just going to say in progress as our let's spell it right as our status okay and then we're just going to go down here and this is where we need to do an end if okay we do a semicolon and then we're going to say return new and then a, a, a semicolon there as well again and we've also got our end down here so let's just tidy that up a little bit let's just move up here let's just move that little space out here so there we go then so we're just basically saying as a recap then the new record that we got coming in the number of tasks complete is zero we're going to say it's not started if the new record coming in is the number of tasks complete is equal to the total number of tasks that we've actually got then we mark it as completed otherwise if the number of tasks have completed are not equal to the number of tasks so there's no match there whatsoever then we know that we must be in progress itself and then what we do is down here is we then just return the new record back so that's pretty well much it that's all we need to do in our actual uh, definition and we just need to go down here now and just hit the confirm and hopefully fingers crossed uh, oh we've got a problem here um, let's have a look here we must have made a little typo let's have a little look ah yeah I missed off the semicolon so we just need to make sure that we put semicolons at the end of each of those there as well hit confirm well done if you uh, spotted that oh and we just got a little typo there as well so just hit the confirm That's it, brilliant. Our goal has been, uh, our, our completed trigger function has now been created for us. Let's just clear those out of the way. So next up, we now need to create the actual trigger ourselves. So let's move over to the triggers option. And you can see here, these are the two that we got here and we just need to create a new trigger. So just choose a create new trigger. Let's put the name in there, okay. And it's called update goal completed. Now the table that we're gonna to wanna to make changes to here is gonna be the actual goals table itself. So just choose goals from the list. And then down here, the, um, the actual event that we need to look for is gonna be the actual update, okay. So whenever there's an update to this particular row this is when that trigger is going to fire itself so just click on the update now something slightly different here um, on this particular one we don't want to actually choose an after it's going to be before so what we're going to do is before the actual database change is actually committed okay before the actual row change is being committed to the actual database we're going to want to manipulate it before it's actually saved okay so that's why on the trigger type we're going to choose before the event okay because if, if in this situation if we did it afterwards we could get into some loops because what we'll be doing is is whenever we make a change to the update to the actual goal itself we could then be triggering a continuous cycle of updates which we don't want to do we want to do it before we actually persist it to the actual database itself so that's really really important so so just make sure you choose before the event and then down here the uh, it's not going to be a statement here it's going to be a row so we're going to be handing this at row level and then of course down here we need to actually choose then the function that we're going to want to trigger so of course we're just going to choose the update goal completed and then that's all that we need to do so we can just hit confirm and then you can see here that we've now got the uh, the actual trigger created itself called update goal completed. It's going to operate on the goals table. It's going to call this particular function and it's going to be before that we actually do the update. So that's really, really important. OK, so that's pretty well much it. We can now go back into Flutterflow. We can actually go back into the in, into the test and let's actually see this actually working in action. So here we go then fired up the test app we've got one goal in here which has two uh, uncompleted tasks okay so click on that you can see here that we've got task one if i just select that hopefully i'll see the amber yes i do i see the amber so we know our status is set to in progress i'll just choose that choose the task there we've got them all completed and we've got the green so everything is looking like it's working perfectly for us which is absolutely fantastic so that is the power of triggers please do consider using them as one option to pass some of the the heavy work back to the server itself let the server do all the talking when it comes to making these type of checks and updating your database behind the scenes as well
So next up, we now need to then focus on modifying our application. We need to start removing out some of this stuff. We don't need any of this anymore. We can remove that from our app. So let's go and quickly do that now. So here we are then back in Flutterflow on the widget tree. Let's have a look here on the left hand side. We want to remove them from the create goals. We don't need the actual progress itself. So let's just delete that. So that's gone. We're just going to put a uh, some padding here just on that there so we just can move that down a little bit the container on the top there we're going to want to probably reduce its size i currently set to 500 let's try 380 okay that's just about right here so that's looking good for us and then on the we need to do the same thing as well on the update in fact with a little error up here let's sort this one out first here let's just go into here select the actual error itself and we're going to want to remove the status okay we're no longer going to be setting that so let's just hit remove and then the error should all go away for us which is great let's move over to the update goal let's choose the status let's just delete that and then again on this a goal description let's just put a bottom padding here of 20 and on the container itself just scroll up here let's just select that and we can then also choose three 80 there so it just brings it a little bit smaller so that's good so that's pretty well much set for us oh we've got the letter up here we've got to remove that as well of course go back in here let's just remove the status from there so that's gone let's close that we should have our tick there that's again yo so now what we need to do is we need to just make sure that we've inside our home page itself that we actually uh, make sure we adjust the height that we're actually opening up that bottom bar so let's just choose the uh, the container here let's just scroll up here onto the goals container that we've got here and let's go to the actions open up the action flow editor and on the long press we're going to want to change the bottom sheet okay so just select that and we're going to choose the height and we're just going to say 380 because that's the size that we've got so just close that and we're also going to want to do the same here on the a fab button just select that go to the actions go to the action flow editor here and then just take and 500 out of there and just type in 380 and that should be good so let's have a quick little test in the uh, in the actual test mode here let's do an instant reload so there we go let's create a new goal so that's great so there we go nice height now that we've got the the progress um, has now disappeared so test goal three just put some rubbish in there hit create okay so just created the goal there and I've just spotted that actually it hasn't actually appeared okay so I think I know what the problem is I think what's happening is is we're not actually doing a refresh so let's go and sort that out now let's go back into Flutterflow let's go to the actual uh, we're actually calling the create which is just here so this is the floating action button here go back to action flow editor and you can see here we just got one uh, we've actually just got this uh, single call to the bottom sheet okay we need to actually do a refresh behind this so just hit the little plus had an action and we just need to do a search for refresh here refresh database request and we want to choose the list view so just choose that and that should be all that we need to do now if I go back to our application just to an instant reload we'll see that goal that will probably appear now but we'll just quickly try creating another one just to make sure that that goal does appear now you may have noticed that actually during the actual series actually I hadn't actually spotted that myself that that was actually a problem so uh, well done if you've corrected your code to sort that one out let's just hit the little plus here let's just create a test goal four just put some rubbish in here hit create goal and there we go we've got the refresh that's now happening which is perfect so within test goal four let's just check that let's just create a quick uh, task here test task one just hit the button there to create and you can see there if i go back everything is looking pretty good if i just mark that one as completed and go back and we've got the full completion that's set on the status so everything is working perfectly with inside our application so let's move on to the next bit. There we go. Thank you for watching episode 15 in this series. Hope you are enjoying this series so far. Our application is taking great shape now. In the next episode, we are going to put some more UI enhancements into our application just to give it a little bit more polish. So please do join me for that particular episode. Of course, please do like the video. And of course, please do subscribe to the channel if you love following along in building these.